Hi guys, my name is Sandy. I'm the homeschooling mom to two boys. My boys are going to be going into sixth grade and fourth grade next year. So today I'm going to go over what our picks are for the 2019-2020 school year. So here is pretty much everything laid out for the year that we're going to be using. And I haven't gathered completely everything yet, but this is most of it. So first off, I'm going to go over what we're going to do this summer. We don't homeschool during the summer, but I do ask that my kids do 30 minutes of silent reading each day. In addition to that, we have done the BJU Level 3 this past school year. I'm going to do a read aloud of the BJU Level 4. I found this at such a good price that we're going to go over the Level 4 this summer. And then we're going to move into level 5 during the school year of the 2019-2020. And also, I found this history book that talks about different stories from history. And I thought that would be kind of fun to do as a read aloud this summer also. And it first goes over world history, and then it moves into American history. And we've already started reading this, and my kids are enjoying it. So my fourth grader, he had done teaching textbooks last year. And he said he wants to try something new this year. I really like teaching textbooks, but he looked at a few different math curriculums, and this is what he picked. Now, he would have been in the teaching textbooks level 5, but I've heard that this is a little more difficult. So I just went with his grade level, level 4. And he's already learned a lot of these things in teaching textbooks level 4. But we are, So we are going to start on lesson 43, and he's going to work through it. He might get on to level 5 by the end of the year, I'm not sure. So I have bought the teacher guide with it. I've read reviews and I noticed that people that have bought the teacher guide seem to like the program a little bit better. I'm not sure how much we're going to use it. And here's the textbook to go with it. I can't really do a review because we haven't tried anything in here yet. But it's colorful and he likes the way it looks. And he got kind of sick of doing everything on the computer. So we'll see how this works. My fourth grader is going to be using Cottage Press for Language Arts. We had used Language Lesson for Living Education from Masterbooks last year, and he really liked it. He never once complained about doing a lesson. But he told me at the end of the year, I really want to try something different. I showed him a bunch of different samples of curriculum. I even showed him The Good and the Beautiful, which is what my older son is using. And he just didn't really care for anything in the way it looked. But I happened to find this Cottage Press. And he loved the way it looked from the second he looked at it. So we're going to give this a try. I bought the teaching book, Teaching Helps, with it. Um, from what I can understand, you really need this to go with it. You can't do the program without the teacher book. And they have three books, one for each season. This is the autumn book. They have a winter book and a spring book. And I have not bought the other two books to finish out the school year, mainly because I don't know if he's going to like it. So I didn't want to invest in the whole school year if he's not going to like it. One of the reasons I picked this is because I do like how they have a winter, spring, and fall book. And, and they kind of their lessons are kind of going around the seasons. Uh, the thing that my son really likes about here is you do two pages a day. They're listed for each day. This is week three, day three. And this is also week three, day three. So this is just one day, and then the next day, you flip it, you do these two pages. So it's very straightforward. He's going to know exactly how much work he's going to have to do each day. It's got picture studies and nature studies in here, which is something I really like. He had told me he doesn't really want anything with flashy colors. He just wants it straightforward. I'll have to do a review on this once we actually start using it. And to go with this autumn book, they recommend reading through this other book here. There's stories in here. So the children can either read this or you can do read aloud. I'm going to have him read this. His reading level is pretty high. He shouldn't have any trouble reading a little story from here each day. And he's also going to have to do a 30 minutes of silent reading, whatever book he picks in addition to this. And I had also bought the spring book, because if we don't get to the spring cottage press curriculum, 
I think this is going to be a fun book for him to read anyways. There's a few pictures in here, but not too many. And then, you for your nature studies, you're going to have to study trees and mammals and animals and things like that. So, I have this that we've used in the past. North American Wildlife. I think he's going to find this book very useful to use alongside the Cottage Press curriculum. It's going to help him identify trees and animals. And also, they have picture studies of artwork. They have lots of free pictures online that you can print up. I happen to have this art book at home, so we're going to use this just to save on color ink. And this Cottage Press curriculum really isn't well advertised, which is why we had never come across it before. But I kind of wish I had heard of it earlier. I think we're really going to enjoy going through it. So just to mention, the Cottage Press is set for four days a week. Now, we have language arts five days a week. So if he really likes this and we stick with it, I think he's going to go through the fall, the winter, and the spring book. And he'll probably have enough time at the end of the year to move on to their next level up in the spring book in their primer two. And in addition to this, we are going to be doing um, keyboarding on a, the computer, an online keyboarding program, and I'm probably going to add up in an online spelling program. This is really light on the spelling. If your child's like naturally awesome at spelling, you wouldn't need anything else. But I would really like to give my son a little bit more experience spelling with the keyboard. Now my son, my older son, he's going to be going into 6th grade, and we are going to be finishing the Good and the Beautiful Level 4 for about one month, and then we're going to be moving into the Level 5, and since we have language arts five days a week, we should be able to complete the Level 5 completely by the end of the school year. And he loves the Good and the Beautiful. He doesn't want to change, so he's going to be using that another year. And for math... We, he had previously done the teaching textbooks level six. He really likes it. He's going to be doing level seven next year. So there's got, not going to be a switch up for him for that. And of course, in addition to their language arts, they do have 30 minutes of silent reading, anything of their choice, as long as it's like at their grade level or higher. And the next two subjects we have together, we do have science and history together. We are going to move into the BJU level 5, and my thoughts are we're going to do the 5 over the school year. We're going to move into the level 6 next summer, which I'd already purchased. We're just going to read through it. I would really like to get both kids onto the level 7. Um, when my oldest is in 7th grade, so I could just teach them together without having to move him down. And my younger son's really good at grasping concepts for older kids. I don't think the 7th grade is going to be an issue when he's in 5th grade. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue with BJU level 7, though. I've heard it's really difficult. Um, so here is the level 5 textbook. And I did go ahead and get the activity manual to go with it. My older son had mentioned that he's a little sick of like coloring and cutting and pasting, and he wanted to do something a little bit more advanced. And a lot of stuff in here my fourth grader should be able to do as well. I have the teacher's edition for the level five which I'm glad I got it's very useful so this textbook is an older edition than the workbook and I was a little nervous buying the newest edition of the workbook I was worried it wouldn't match up but they match up perfectly everything you read in here there's corresponding pages in here and I'm also going to be using a little bit in here it's the Giant Science Resource Book, grades 1 to 6 with Evan Moore. Now, my, head, my older son had mentioned that some of this is a little childish for him. We're not going to use it exclusively next year. And, of course, I use an old-fashioned teacher planner book that I got from Amazon for, like, $5. It's nothing fancy. I use it just for history and science. Because, of course, language arts and math, you can just go day by day in the curriculum. It tells you exactly what to do each day. And this, I like to have a little more flexibility. So I've got like all the holidays listed in here. We're supposed to be reading through the Treasure Island at this time. And I've got each day. We have math 
I mean, we have um, history and science each two days a week, so we have those for four days a week. And then I've got the date in the top corner. And of course, if someone gets sick or we miss something, the kids don't mind making up the science or history on the weekend. And over here, this is all of our history, our geography items. And it probably takes up the bulk of the books that we have. Our main spine that we're going to use next year is America the Beautiful by Knotgrass History. And since my older son is going to be 6th grade, I wanted to use a curriculum that was for a slightly older child. We're going to be using this main textbook as the spine and as a read aloud. And I mainly picked this because it has beautiful pictures throughout. It talks about different national landmarks all over the country. And we'll see how it goes. I hope it works well. We're going to be working through most of the book. We're going to be stopping right here, which is almost to the end of the book. Um, I wanted to stop before the Civil War so that we could just take our time and go over the Civil War a little bit longer next year. I don't want to try to rush through it. So to go with this, I purchased the map book, which I absolutely love how it looks. I'll show you a lesson in here to show you how the map book works. At the end of each lesson, if there's a page in the map book you have to do, it's listed right here. You just open your map book to the map page, and it gives the children very simple directions on the other side of what they need to do. And this is the only part I got to go with it. There's some workbooks to go with it. Um, I'm not going to be using them. Instead, I'm going to be using... The history pockets because we absolutely love these. We used it last year and it worked out so well. I'm going to be using the Explorers of North America, the Colonial America, and the American Revolution. And the main reason we didn't go with their workbooks for Knotgrass was because the younger age, which is the one I would have used for my ki kids, has a lot of like word searches and crossword puzzles and my kids just aren't interested in doing that. And another reason that I picked to go with the knotgrass, besides the beautiful pictures, was the fact that it talks about how people lived back then. And a lot of curriculums will just give you like the dates of events that happened. And this one goes one step further than that. So in addition to that, for history, I've gotten the Liberty Kids. Um, we're going to be reading through these chapter books, kind of as read-alouds. The Three Musketeers, Treasure Island, The Last of the Mohicans, and Huckleberry Finn. And in addition to the chapter books, here's just some fun books that we're going to read. We've got Colonial America Interactive History Adventure. I have Eli Whitney. The Declaration of Independence. We've got this golden book. It's really, it's like an antique. We've got The Trail of Tears. We've got George Washington. There's one book for each child. I've bought all these books used and I've collected a lot of them. So I, somehow I ended up with two of those. This is more about George Washington's childhood. And then we've got Samuel Eaton's Day. Molly Pitcher. I already had this. I have this from when I was a child. Felicity's Cookbook. The Boy Who Fell Off the Mayflower.
The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. Squanto's Journey. And this is from when I was a child also. We've got the Josephina books. We're going to read through those just because I've had them and they look you know, a little bit fun. And the Alamo. And in addition to that, um, we're going to be starting the 50 states at the end of the year. So I have these two games on the 50 states. And we've already done them. The kids really enjoy them. So that is it for our 2019-2020 school year. Um, after we've used some of these curriculums a little bit, I will do a review on them. But I would really like to get in there and use them for at least two or three months before talking about them in more detail. I hope it was helpful. Bye.